What you write in a results section depends entirely on the statistical test you use. Still, there are some guidelines that may be helpful. One thing to note is that results sections can often be very short. Just make sure that you report all the right information and don't worry much about the length. There will be several major sections. You'll want to provide descriptive statistics. For categorical variables, that will mean reporting the frequencies and percentages of cases in each group. That goes for demographic variables, control variables, and test variables. You also want to provide the means and standard deviations for any continuous variables. In reality, we probably should be reporting the distribution and its parameter estimates. We often default to reporting the statistics as if the distributions are normal. If your data are not normally distributed though, it would be good practice to mention this and to deal with it through transformations or through the use of a different statistical test. But that's pie in the sky. In reality, many researchers and reviewers still either fail to test assumptions or report means and standard deviations even when the data are not normal. It's sloppy, and we as a field should be working on this. Nevertheless, your descriptive statistics section is meant to characterize the sample for your reader. This is important because it gives your reader a sense of what to expect. Imagine that you were studying a sample with severe depression, and you report a mean of 3 out of 63 on your depression measure. That suggests that maybe the sample isn't actually very depressed, or that scale is very oddly valenced, or that the researcher misreported reported something. Transparency in this process allows peer review to work. In your descriptive statistics section, I recommend putting most of the values in a table and describing your sample in general in text. This might only take a paragraph, for instance. In a table, you might have detailed statistics about exactly how many participants graduated high school, went to college, got a degree, etc. In your text, you want to talk more generally. Characterize the sample. Give more of a summary. You might say something like, the sample was were highly educated, with 50% of the sample reporting having earned at least a bachelor's degree. That leaves out some detail, but it tells me something important about the sample in a general overall sense. Next, the assumptions section. Every statistical test has a set of assumptions. If you're being a good researcher, you'll test them. If you violate any assumptions, you need to deal with that. How you deal with assumption violations depends entirely on the assumption, the test, and the nature of the data. I really can't summarize that here without launching uh, an entirely new channel. Most of the time, you'll meet your assumptions. In this case, you really just need to include a line in your manuscript that suggests that you tested the assumptions of the test and they were met. For example, you might just say, all assumptions of multiple linear regression were met. That one liner tells your readers that you know what assumptions are and that you checked them and that they are all okay. So include it. If you violate some assumptions, you really need to talk about which were violated and how. Then you have to describe in detail how you dealt with those violations. This will mean developing a full subsection regarding violations of assumptions and describing your thought processes in detail. There is a caveat to this. If you switch statistical tests, you can take a shortcut. Say something like, assumptions of ANOVA were violated, thus the researchers are utilizing a Kruskal Wallace H instead. That eliminates the need to do a more detailed discussion of assumptions violations. Next section, overall tests. If you're using a multivariate procedure or even a two-way ANOVA, there are multiple steps to the test. Do this systematically. Use a funnel approach. If you have a general test, like a multiple regression, that checks whether an overall model, in an overall sense, predicts an outcome, then you want to start there. Start at the highest level possible, and then drill down. Get more specific in each paragraph. If you have many models, it may be worth it to take them one at a time, but think empathically about your reader. What will help them understand what's going on best? So start by reporting the overall model statistics. Then, in the next section, describe how individual variables performed in those models. If you're doing an ANOVA, start by describing the F-test and its overall significance. Then get into your specifics, for example, your post hocs. If you're talking about a multiple linear regression, make sure that you're talking about the overall model first and reporting those statistics first. That will be R, R squared, adjust adjusted R squared before you start talking about individual level predictors like B, beta, T, and so on. Each test has a profile of things that need to be reported. You just have to know what those are. And the best way to get as close as possible is to find another paper that used the same test and follow their outline. 